everybody, this is Jeff Janess, and welcome to our fifth optional lab exercise as we explore ways to fine-tune our maps to match our dreams for them. And in this exercise, we're going to pick up on what we were doing with text formatting tags in the first optional lab exercise, and we're going to see how to apply them to the text you see in a legend. It's really easy, and this will be a fairly quick video. We're also going to see how to change the column width in a legend so that it fits better horizontally. And in this demonstration, I'll be using ArcGIS Pro version 3.3.1. I'm also going to use the legend we made for the map in Lab Exercise 7, so if you have that available and you want to work along, that's great. But you can just as easily practice this on any legend you have available. So let's zoom in a little bit to the legend portion of this. I'm just going to scroll into it, pan down a little bit. So what we want to do is add some formatting properties to this text, so parts of it are in color, parts are bold, parts are italic, maybe parts are in different fonts. Now, if you remember, it's easy enough to change the text in here. Like, all you have to do is change the text over here. I just put the word sample in front of that. Then the legend changes automatically. So the key here is to add the text formatting tags over here. So that's what we're going to be doing. And remember, there's a lot more information on text formatting tags, including samples and in the four different languages you can use, all available in the appendix to this document. So don't forget to take a look at that if you want to dive deeper into this. And also, for those of you who created a legend that looks something like this and you feel like it's just too narrow and there's no way you can get it to stretch out to the side a little bit, I'm going to give a quick demo of how to fix this, where you can set the, they call this a column width, and you can set the width to be wider. And that way you can have longer names here, and it just makes the text a little more readable. Okay, first thing I'd like to try is to take this text all vehicles in this first item here. And I'd like to change that to the color Ganado Red, sort of a deep maroon color, based on the Navajo rugs that come from Ganado. So to do that, we're going to use the color tag. This is CLR, stands for color. This closes the color tag. Now, within the color tag, we have to specify the actual color. So we can use a few different formats. I'm using the RGB color model here. You could also use CMYK if you wanted to, or spot colors. But I'm used to RGB, red, green, blue, so I'm going to use that. So, so this means we have to open the tag with this and add this information. And I've got it all written here, so I'm just going to copy this out. Notice that red equals the value. The value has to be in single quotes. I have a red, I have a green, and I have a blue. These three parameters don't have to be separated by commas. They're just separated by spaces, and that's fine. But make sure you put the value in single quotes. All right, so I'm going to copy this. This opens the tag. I'm just going to come into here. I'm going to paste it in in front of all vehicles. Okay, that opens the tag. Now to close the tag, we go to the end of all vehicles and close the tag. All right. click off of it, and we'll see all vehicles has turned to Ganado Red. All right, easy enough. Next step, let's set the word year long to be a blue color. And if we just say blue equals 255, then the labeling engine will just assume that the red and green values are equal to zero. So red, zero, green, zero, blue, 255 makes a pretty bright blue color. So I'm going to put that around the word year long. Right here, put that in front. And then we close the tag at the end. Click off of it. And now year long is in blue. Okay, next we're going to set the text all vehicles to be in a different font. We're going to use Verdana, so I'm, we have to use the font tag for that. So we specify the font within the font tag where name equals Verdana. Again, Verdana is in single quotes, notice that. So I'm going to just copy this. I'm going to put this in front of the color tag. That means when I close the font, I have to close it after the color tag gets closed. Remember, we use the first in, last out pattern here. 
So all vehicles, then all vehicles closes the color, and now we close the font. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Yep, all vehicles change the font. Good enough. Now let's put all vehicles in italics. So I'm going to put italics in front of font. You might see how this might be easier to construct in just a little text editor and then copy and paste the whole thing in. Otherwise you're doing a lot of traversing in this narrow little thing. Okay, let's close italics. See how that looks. Yep, all, all vehicles turn to italics. Cool, cool. Now let's put all vehicles year long, that whole stretch to be in bold. So I can start the bold here. Now I want to get to the end of year long. These are all the tags around all vehicles. And we're closing all this. Then we start new tags for year long. And we close the color, but now we're going to close the bold. So that whole stretch is within the bold tag. Okay, all vehicles year long are now in bold. And that's pretty much all you have to do. Um, the rest of this lab exercise just shows you how to do the same thing to the other other items. It's really easy. Um, I'm, I'm not going to step through that all here, but I just wanted to show you if you if you wanted to do something fancy like uh, put in superscripts like subscripts H, then you could put like subscript to close a subscript O, then you can get the symbol for water. Oh, let's get this. This got a space in front of it. We don't need the space there. Yeah, there we go. Uh, if you wanted, you could do superscripts as well, like like E equals MC squared. Close a superscript. So you can get a little bit of nice symbology here, nice text formatting. You know, it's nothing like if you're wanting to do latex and really get a fancy equation formats up here, but it's it's not bad for simple uses like this. All right, so that, that pretty much covers what I want to show. All you have to do is type in the text formatting codes in here. The effects get expressed here in the legend itself. Okay, now the last thing I wanted to show you was how to change the column width of this, because this is kind of narrow. It's not, it's not the way I would want to have the legend you know, squeezed together like that. And it, it's kind of annoying because you can make the legend wider, but it just doesn't make any difference here. So how do we make the text reach further out? All right, so this is one of the legend properties. You can get to the legend properties several ways. You can right click over here and go to, go to properties, or you can just right click on the legend itself and go to properties, or you can just double click on the legend. All of them will open up the properties pane. Now we want to go to the legend section. We want to come to the legend arrangement options here. Now right in here there's a section for word wrapping. Like we could remove word wrapping altogether and then it just stretches all the way out. And that's a, that's a definitely an option sometimes. But there are times you would like the words to wrap a little bit. So you have the control over that. So we can turn on word wrapping, but we can make this say two and a half inches instead. And then we just get a little bit wider legend. So you have some control over this. Um, my legend is showing the labels over here. You can set up your legend so that it shows descriptions and both of these are adjustable within this legend pane. All right, everybody, that pretty much wraps it up. Thanks so much for participating and uh, have fun with your maps. Take care. Bye-bye.